So if that's a cop-out, well then, there's no sense talking to me. Because I'm going to cop out. So the reason I do what I do, and the reason I try to call out this false doctrine that I see, that is snuck in amongst the children, is because the Father told me to. I did not want to have to do this. I didn't want to change my name and my icon. But it was time. Again, you have to choose what to believe. Maybe I'm just a crazy old man. That's up for you to decide. But he told me it was time. There was a wolf. See, and photo, I must admit, I was quite impressed with photo Saturday when he mentioned the icon change and sort of almost got the meaning behind it. Because everything I've done, whether I knew it or not, believe me, a lot of times I didn't know till it was done and I looked back and was like, wow, that's why that happened. Is for the Father, everything, even a name change or an icon change. See, the original icon that I've used since basically day one on YouTube was the one you've all come to know with the son and the children. And it had many meanings for those that would think about it. Of course, like I said, it was because we need prayers for the children, the real children that are alive and being tortured in horrendous ways today. And also, it was to represent how Jesus loves the children. And also, it was to represent that before we can come to know the truth and follow Jesus, just like he said, we have to become like little children. We have to get rid of all that indoctrination. We have to humble ourselves enough to trust that spirit when it shows us the truth because it is not what we've been taught. So when the Spirit shows us a truth that you just can't even believe, that's faith. That's how you show faith. Are you going to believe the Spirit? Or are you going to grieve the Spirit? That's your only two choices. I tend to believe it. And again, usually... When I believe it, it isn't too long till the Father gives me many confirmations to show me that it's true. But that's faith. Trusting that spirit. Believing what it tells you. Doing what it tells you. Following Jesus. First you've got to get on that cross. You've got to die. Then you've got to follow Him. And the only way Again, none of this is about anything that I've accomplished. This is all about how I accomplished it. And I accomplished it first through the mercy of the Father when He put me on my knees and showed me how guilty I was. Then through the grace of the Son who showed me that as long as I climbed up on that cross and followed Him, It was all forgiven. I was white as snow. And then third, by being given that spirit so that now I could truly accomplish what Jesus and the Father wants me to accomplish, which is follow Him and obey His commandments and love my neighbors as myself and love the Father way above everything. But without that spirit, I could do none of it. Without listening to that spirit, 
I could do none of it. This is not about me trying to pump myself up or make myself look better than you in any way. This is about me trying to carry out the Father's will the best as I can in this flesh, messing up as I do in this flesh, but only accomplishing what I do accomplish by the power of the Spirit, not by my power in any way, shape, or form. This has nothing to do with me. This has everything to do with the Father and what Jesus did for us. Jesus reconnected us to the Father. The Father gave us a spirit to enable us to accomplish everything He wants us to accomplish. We still have to make the choice. It isn't as simple as saying you believe Jesus. Because if you believe in Jesus, then you better believe you need to do what He says. Now people can twist the scriptures. They do it all the time. There's many false teachers. There's many false Jesuses. What you have to do is decide who you're going to believe. And the only way you can truly decide is by getting to know them yourself. I don't know what else to say. I don't even know what I've just said. <laughs> Again, there is no script. I'm just saying what I feel needs to be said. So with all the little bit of drama that's recently happened in our little community, some of you may know about it, some of you may not. Understand that why I did what I did, and I tried to do it privately, and I tried to do it as discreetly as possible. I never called out a name. All I'm doing is trying to warn that they're there. There are wolves and false doctrines among us. That's all I'm trying to do. I took it personal to the ones who I think are doing it. That is what Jesus told me to do. That is what I did. So, all I'm trying to do is spread a warning message that the Father laid on my heart. You have to decide whether you believe me or not. And the warning message is and was that there is a wolf or wolves among us. You have got to pray for that spirit. You have got to ask for that spirit to show you all truth, to give you discernment so that you can spot them. Because they have neon signs for me. Again, not because I'm anything special, but because I, I listen to the spirit. I understand. I see it plain as day. I know the false teachings because I know what I've been showed is the truth. So the minute it don't line up with what I know Jesus says, I don't have to go any further. It's false. If it goes against what Jesus says, then to me it's false. There is no twisting it to make me believe it. There is no... They do so many things to try to back up their falsehood. It amazes me. But it isn't going to change my mind. I know the truth. I'm just here to try to warn and to try to share the truth with anyone who wants it. I'm not here to tell you what to believe. I'm just here to tell you what I've learned and that you need to test it. If what I say moves you in any way, good or bad, know that it isn't me saying what I want to say. If I do my job correctly, like I want to, it's the Father saying what He wants to say. Pay attention. 
Again, I'm not trying to be bold, haughty, proud. I've heard it all. I've been called uh, bringing dissension, uh, causing division, uh, being hateful, revengeful, <laughs> spiteful, uh, mean. <laughs> I've heard it all. And I understand. But see, it don't surprise me. Jesus told me all that. I knew all that going in. He told me I'd be hated. He told me they aren't going to like the truth. He told me it's going to upset. He told me it's a two-edged sword. He told me all this. None of this surprises me. I don't like it. You think I like having to upset friends because I have to tell them the truth? I have no choice. I don't do it because I want to. I do it because I have to. I know the consequences, so I don't want to do it. Trust me, the flesh in me does not want to make people hate me. But the spirit in me already knows it was going to happen. And it's okay because Jesus loves me and so is the Father. And I love you guys. And that's why I do what I do. The short answer after however long this is, probably an hour by now, I don't know. I'm not timing it. But the short answer as to why I do what I do is simple. It's because I love the Father more than anything in this world. And I love my neighbors as myself. So if the Father gives me a message, I've got to deliver it. If my flesh makes it come out seeming harsh or strong or, or I, I'd fail to get the point across then I'm sorry. But believe me, if the bad things that the message may make you feel, give that to me. I'll take that. That's my flesh. I try. I do the best I can do. But I am but a man. But the, don't throw away the message. Because the messenger isn't real good at getting it out there. At least try to hear what he has to say and think about it. That's all I ask. Just think about it. So that's why I do what I do. Because I love you. Do I have to say things that you may not like? Yes. But that's part of love. If I was to just see that wolf come amongst you, teaching what they're teaching, knowing that it's a false doctrine and it's going to lead you astray. How is it loving to just go away and say nothing? That's not loving. It's loving to tell people the truth, whether they accept it or not. That's all I can do. Again, I never called out names. I'm not about that. I've called them out in private. And I've warned others about it. But I've never mentioned the names. I shouldn't have to. If you truly are following the Father and have the same spirit I have, you should see them yourself. And you should steer clear. Because they're leading you in a bad place. Narrows the way, Jesus said. Straight. There's very few that make it. And remember also, for those people that think once you have it, you can't lose it. And I know they'll twist it and they'll have their excuses for why this doesn't apply to that. But this is just one time that Jesus said things like this. And he said it many, many times. But I'm going to give you a couple quick examples of why I think you can lose it. One from Jesus. And one from Paul. Jesus told us
that those who believe on him and keep his commandments would be saved. So if you couldn't lose your salvation, why would he say that? Why wouldn't he just say those who believe on me shall be saved? And for those of you who try to say, well, he was talking to Jews, or I've heard him twist it many ways. They're twisting it. It's up to you to decide whether they are or not. I know they are. I believe they are. And want to go quick straight to Paul and like, oh, unless no man can boast and they'll start throwing scriptures about how, you know, you can't work for salvation and blah, 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 blah. And I totally agree. But I also understand how they're twisting all that to make it mean what they want it to mean. I understand what those scriptures say. And they don't counteract anything that Jesus says. Although they want you to think it does. And they're good at twisting it. Again, this is up to you. The Spirit can show you the same things. But even Paul, when he writes to his son, his basically his son, he Timothy when he writes to him in the end of his life if you can't lose it remember we're talking about whether or not you have to do anything for your salvation whether you can lose it basically I'm saying you need to get on a cross and die and you need to follow Jesus clean to the end Jesus said those who endure to the end shall be saved but even Paul who they use to preach this false doctrine of you just got to believe in Jesus and if you do anything beyond that you're somehow taking away from his sacrifice it makes no sense to me even Paul as he's dying writes to Timothy and says I have run the race He's finished the race. He stood strong till the end. Why was Paul so happy that he had finished the race if there was no race to be won? I've rambled long enough, I think, this time. I just want you to know that everything I say, I try to say out of love even if you don't comprehend what I'm trying to say or how I'm trying to say it. I'm not doing it to be mean or hateful or for revenge or spiteful. I'm doing it because the Father told me to do it. And I'm doing it the best as a stupid flesh will allow. Luckily, I have the Spirit to at least help me do it as best as I can. That's all I want to talk about right now. So just be careful, brothers and sisters. Test every spirit. And always remember also, let every man be a liar and God, the Father, be true. Please get to know them. It's a personal relationship. Before it's too late, get to know the Father, His Son, and the Holy Spirit that can live in each side of all of us and enable us to do exactly what Jesus taught us to do, which is go and sin no more. See you next time. I told you my story You would hear hope They wouldn't let go And if I told you my story You would hear love But never gave up And if I 